when witches go riding and black cats are seen, the moon laughs and whispers, "'Tis near Halloween." If you like to learn, but lack enough time, to locate the reason or translate the rhyme, with magical knowledge from ancient tomes on the shelf, I bring Halloween topics to geek thyself. Hello everyone, I'm Heather and I'll be your host for this podcast. Halloween is my favorite holiday and my favorite spooky time of the year. So park your broom at the door and listen for a spell as I brew up some Halloween topics for this week and the rest of October. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Geek Thyself. So we're continuing on with our Halloween theme for all the month of October, and this week I'm going to be talking to you about how to throw a great Halloween party. There's a lot of different kinds of Halloween parties out there, ranging from kid-friendly to not kid-friendly, all the way to full-on haunted house huge event. So it really comes down to what kind of party you want to throw. I'm going to walk through a couple of different party scenarios and give you guys some resources you can look into if you're not sure how much you want to spend or what sort of party you want to throw. So to start off with, I'm going to begin with one of the ones that I've done a lot of actually over the years, which is a murder mystery party, or sometimes just a mystery party. Sometimes it's just that some item goes missing. These are really fun for groups of close friends, especially who know each other really well, and also really work well for smaller groups. So if you want to have an interesting and different Halloween party, and you know it's going to be a fairly small group of people, especially if it's all people that you know would enjoy getting into a character and really kind of going for it, then a murder mystery party is a great option. For anyone who's never done a murder mystery party before, the basic setup is generally the same. There's a host who invites people over to the house, and everyone before the party is given some sort of character. So essentially, when you show up at the party, you're already in costume, and you already have a little bit of information about who your character is and sort of how they relate to everyone else in the group. One thing I will say if you're the one hosting is try to make sure that you pick a character for your friend who's coming that they're actually going to enjoy playing. For instance, someone who, you know, really doesn't like playing villains is probably not going to want to play one of the characters that's a little darker and more villainous. However, someone who just really loves getting into it and being the crazy character is going to love playing that kind of character. So those are things to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is because it is a costume party, since most of these murder mysteries are themed, you want to assign the people their roles, partly based off the costume also. If you know that someone is coming who really doesn't like costuming that much, but is going to be willing to at least participate, then you should probably give them one of the roles that doesn't have quite as intricate a costume. So hypothetically, if you were playing some sort of X-Men murder mystery, for example, I don't think there is one, but if there was one, you could give someone like that the role of, you know, Professor X or Jean Grey or Cyclops, because, you know, if they go as Scott Summers, all they have to do is wear a leather jacket and put on some red sunglasses and they're done. So it's a really easy costume and they don't have to necessarily buy a bunch of pieces. So it makes it easier for some people if they want to participate, but don't necessarily get into costuming the same way that other people do. Another thing with the murder mystery parties is you need to keep in mind how many people you're inviting. There are really large murder mysteries out there that you can buy, but in my experience, the most fun ones are the ones that are a little smaller and with a close group of friends because everybody knows everybody else. So you can just kind of let go and be ridiculous with your character and get really into it and not have to worry about feeling awkward with people you don't know very well. One website that you can go to that has a lot of good options is called mymysteryparty.com. 
they give tips and tricks for how to host a good murder mystery party, but they also have ones that you can purchase. And there's a bunch of different options ranging in group size and also group uh, composition. So like they have some that are for just men and they have some that are for just female roles. So if you happen to have a group of friends you want to try it with that don't have multiple genders, that's a way to go. Another thing I will say, again, from experience, is that the more the host gets into it, the more fun it is. So, you know, if you're hosting, go all out. Decorate the house. Find little period pieces you can put up. You know, if you're doing a 1920s themed murder mystery, which I've done before, you can go on Spotify and look for music from the 1920s, which you can then play in the background as everything's going on. So like speakeasy type music. You know, if you're going to be doing some sort of monster themed party, so maybe everyone's coming as fairy tale creatures, the food you put out could be sort of fairy tale themed. So, you know, unicorn cupcakes or things like that, you know, depending on what you're capable of managing, but also what how far you want to go. I also will say, and this goes for every party that I'm talking about, regardless of size, Don't be afraid to use resources like the Dollar Tree and the 99 cent store to get pieces like tablecloths and plates and things like that. Depending on what you're buying, like for decorations especially, you can often find some really good deals there. So depending on how sturdy you want it to be, you know, if you want the item to last for years and years, don't don't go to the 99 cent store in the Dollar Tree. But if you just want it to work for that night, just as like a prop piece for your party, then you can find a lot of good decorations there at a really low cost. Similarly, stores like Big Lots also often have a lot of holiday decorations. And you can also go to places like Target, you know, they have the little $1 bins. So you might be able to find things there. Another fun thing with a smaller, more intimate party that you can do is don't be afraid to give out prizes for, you know, the best costume. Don't be afraid to give your friends a prize for the best role play or things like that. Or just, you know, have little participation prizes at the end and maybe you can find something that's sort of themed with the murder mystery. That kind of thing. So there's a lot of options you can play around with, and there's a lot of different settings you can do for the murder mysteries. I mentioned I've done one that's 1920s. I've done one that was fairy tale creatures. I've also done one that was famous, like nursery rhyme characters uh, and fairy tale creatures. So like Beauty and the Beast, but also Little Red Riding Hood and stuff like that. Cruella de Vil was there. Uh, and then I've also done one that was sort of Roman themed with there was a Caesar and everything. So there's a lot of different options. You just have to find one that you think will work for you and your friends. And again, that mymysteryparty.com is a good resource. They have a lot of different ones you can look at there for different sizes of groups. You can also look on Amazon. If you look on Amazon, make sure you pay attention to what it says in terms of how many people the party works for. A lot of these sets will come with one or two extra roles that you can assign to people if you have one or two extra people that show up. But generally speaking, there's a set number because they've carefully figured out who gets what role, who gets what information when, that kind of thing. Another fun thing to do with it, if you have a lot of couples coming, is to find one that specifically deals with couples of characters. So, for instance, Red Riding Hood and the Wolf, or Little Bo Peep and the Big Bad Wolf, you know, that kind of thing. If you can find one that does that, then that means a couple could come in a theme costume. Which, especially if one of them is not as interested in costuming, sometimes makes it a little more fun for them. So, moving on from a smaller, more intimate party into a really large party. So when I say large, I don't mean you necessarily have a couple hundred people showing up to your house. I just mean you have more people than is usually easy to manage for a smaller murder mystery type party. So, you know, you don't have 10 or 12 people showing up to your house. Maybe you have 20 or 30 people showing up to your house. That's a decent sized party. And for situations like that, things like a murder mystery in particular don't always work as well. They do exist. They make murder mysteries for groups that big. But usually it means that people have to break up into teams and work together, and especially if you have people coming that don't know each other or don't know each other well, it can be a little awkward. 
So for those situations, you can still have a themed party and you can even do things like have a costume contest and make it so that the host, so you are not the judge, you know, you could randomly have people draw lots to see who judges the party versus who participates in the contest, that kind of thing. And, you know, you can do catwalks and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you can set things up to be a lot of fun. You can also just have a straight up themed party and go all out. So, for example, because I've already used it, 1920s, you know, everyone comes dressed in 1920s costumes, you can have the music going, you can look up old recipes for 1920s cocktails and things like that, you know, you could have their invitations to the party, include some sort of speakeasy password to get into the house, you know, there's all these kinds of little things you can do to just sort of up the ante on the party and make it that much more fun and that much more immersive for the people coming. The foods, you can have foods that are based off of things that were eaten back then, especially when you're setting it in a time period where we have a lot of documentation. It's easier to look back and find that information and then you can correspond it to what you're having at the party. You don't have to. But you can if you want to. So it's another fun little thing you can throw in there. Another thing you can do, but doesn't necessarily have to be as strongly themed, is you can rent an escape room or a haunted house. They actually make mobile haunted houses and mobile escape rooms. Now, if you're going to do that, you're going to have to plan way ahead because understandably, those things end up getting rented very quickly. You know, they they have limited time, especially if you want right around Halloween and not before or after. And also, depending on your area, especially, there's not going to be a lot of companies that do it, but they do exist. So you can find them. You just have to go online and check for your area what's available. There's also actually quite a few places where you can rent a rental home or a sort of event area that's quote-unquote haunted. Uh, I say quote-unquote because I know not everyone believes in actual hauntings, so if you're one of those, I covered my bases. But in general, there are places where you can rent out a location that is known to be haunted, and you can have a party there. You could also do this with a themed party. So you could all, for example, if you find a sort of Victorian looking house and rent that one and want to, and it's a haunted house situation, you could then invite your friends and have everyone dress up in Victorian clothing or at least Victorian style clothing as close as you can get. And then, you know, you could even do a murder mystery there. You can combine things however you want. And if you were doing at a, an event at a bigger house like that, where you were actually renting someone else's place, it might not be as hard to do sort of groups for a murder mystery because then everyone's in an environment they're not familiar with, including you. You can make sure just everybody's introduced or if you're having several different groups of friends come to the party, keep those groups together. So, for example, if I was throwing a big party and I invited my friends from Nerdsmith, but then I also invited my family, but then I also invited some of my husband's family, and then I also invited some of my coworkers from the cat hospital I work at, all of those groups would not know each other, but I could easily have each of those groups be their own sort of team for a large murder mystery. So there's ways you can work around it if you want to do something like that. It just is going to require a lot more planning and a lot more coordinating in terms of getting everything together. You're also going to have to make sure that just in case something happens last minute and someone can't make it, that you sort of have backup plans in place. Because if you have something that big and coordinated of an event, you're not going to want to suddenly have to scrap everything just because one person got sick and couldn't make it. And this, again, you're going to have to look into your local listings and, you know, Google for your area what sort of options you have in terms of those sort of haunted locations. And even if it's not a truly haunted location, there are places where you can rent a haunted house and not a mobile one that will come to you, 
but there are places where you can rent an existing haunted house. So something that someone has already set up to act as a haunted house and you don't have to then do any of the setup. It's already prepared. You can have dinner at your house beforehand or something like that or depending on the location, maybe you can have dinner there. That's something you'd have to look into the details on because it's going to vary site to site. Okay, so with that, we're going to go into our break, and then when I come back, I'm going to give you some tips for having a really large event. Okay, so this week in our mid-break, I want to talk about a couple of different things. The first one is, of course, I want to talk about World Anvil. I've mentioned it a bunch here on the show. It's a wonderful site, worldanvil.com. They're one of our sponsors here for a lot of the role-playing games at Nerdsmith, and it's a great way to organize the world you're creating, whether it be for an RPG or or a video game, or even for a book you might be writing. There's a lot of different timeline options and map options, and you can create your entire world right there on the site. The other thing I want to talk about is one of the other shows here at Nerdsmith, especially if you're enjoying my Halloween episodes. I recommend checking it out because I think it's something you'd enjoy. It's not family friendly, so if that's a factor, keep that in mind, but it is called Monster Crush. Monster Crush is one of the newest shows here at Nerdsmith, and what they do is sort of a mishmash of Blind Date meets Guess the Monster. So, or actually kind of Blind Date meets Guess Who. Because Heavenly knows a lot about cryptids, and Ellie doesn't. So Heavenly basically describes a bunch of different cryptids to her, and Ellie has to decide which one she'd like to go on a date with. So it's definitely fun, and I think if you're enjoying these Halloween episodes, you'd probably enjoy that as well. So I recommend checking it out. The other thing I want to recap on from last week's mid-roll is that my special for Halloween, I announced, is going to be me reading a book. It's going to be a Halloween book. I got permission from the publisher and the author to read this book, and it is called Mr. Boggarty, the Halloween Grump. It is a middle school-aged book reading level book and so it is family friendly for anyone who listens to this show with their children at all so you definitely will be able to still share it with everybody you don't have to worry about that thank you again to Henderson Publishing for being willing to let me read that for the podcast and it'll probably be a longer episode than usual because I'm gonna be reading a book instead of just talking for half an hour but I think you all will enjoy it and so with that let's get back to this week's topic Okay, so hosting a large event. So for really, really large events, unless you've got a gigantic house, I just flat out don't recommend doing it at your house. Because if you're talking large event, I'm thinking like 100 plus people. Personally, I don't want to clean up after that. I don't want to have to deal with it. You know, if you're hosting one of those kinds of large events, then definitely I would say just go somewhere. Find a place you can rent and go have the event there. Save yourself the pain and heartache of trying to deal with it. Now, because of that, though, because you're going to be going somewhere else and having to coordinate so much stuff, you're going to want to make sure you start really early. So, for instance, today is October 9th that I'm finishing up this recording. This would not be enough time, probably, to plan a big event like that. Not only because you have to send out all the invitations, but you have to coordinate the food, you have to coordinate with the event location. I mean, it's just, it's a nightmare. Start ahead. You're going to probably want to start that in a minimum of August, I would think. At least reaching out to places to find out where you can rent. Again, that takes us back to the previous discussion with, you know, the different places you can rent that are haunted and have events at. For this one, you could do the same thing. You can find some sort of quote-unquote haunted venue or something like that and have a big Halloween party, but you're going to have to rent out the location. And you'll want to definitely, like I said, make sure you do it way ahead of time. And you can still have a lot of theme to it. You know, you could ask the, the event location to decorate to a certain theme. Uh... An example that just popped into my head is if you wanted to do some sort of Halloween haunted Carrie, like the original movie Carrie situation. So you could have everybody dress up in like 1980s prom theme 
and the prom queen or king or whatever, you know, it could be in on it. Make sure they're in on it. Don't just dump stuff on somebody because that's not okay. But you can have something like that themed where you've got this big event and there's a theme to it still. So everybody could come in 80s prom dresses, which were interesting looking. And things like that and still make it a fun Halloween party that's got a little bit of a theme. You can also have music. And beyond just having a theme music, so like 80s music if you're doing an 80s party, you could also have a lot of Halloween themed music or find a band that is willing to play Halloween songs. So, you know, Monster Mash and uh, Witch Doctor and things like that. There's a lot of older songs in particular that have sort of a spooky theme to them thriller you know that's even 80s themed so that's perfect but those are things you have to plan ahead so for a large event my biggest 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 recommendation is plan ahead don't expect to be able to pull it off super last minute because it's unlikely to be very easy to have that happen you could probably find a caterer last minute because i don't think there's probably that many places that cater gigantic halloween events on a regular basis so you could probably find a caterer but then you'd have to still find a location, and those are the ones that are going to be harder, especially if you want to have any kind of haunting or haunted theme to it. But that, again, might be something where you could do it at your house if you have the space, or if you're at a school or something, you could do it there, and then have one of those mobile escape rooms come, or have a mobile haunted house come and be part of the event. So you could just have a general Halloween party that's got all the fun food and costumes and music, and then there could be a portion of it that's also, hey, go in the escape room and see if you can get out. Go in the haunted house and have fun with it. Also, for a large event especially, one thing you could look into is hiring some local actors. Local theater actors are often quite good. They just are not necessarily trying to get to, you know, Hollywood or anything. I know people who do local theater that are good. And especially for something like that where they're playing some sort of outlandish, horrific character or villainous character, depending on your setting, you could probably find people willing to do it for a reasonable amount of money, especially if you feed them or something, or if you happen to have a friend who does local theater, they might know somebody who'd really enjoy it. I mean, you have options. You just have to look into those things in order to find out if you even have it available to you. Okay, so backing up from large-scale events to just any Halloween party... If you are trying to throw an awesome Halloween party and you don't want to necessarily do a murder mystery, it's not going to be necessarily gigantic like a large event, but you still want to make it just really fun and really epic, then the number one thing I would recommend is have fun with it. Do something that you're going to enjoy because if you set up a party that you're going to be miserable at, no one else is going to have fun. If the host is sitting there miserable in a corner, not enjoying anything that's happening, then, you know, all of your friends and family or whoever you invite are going to catch on to that and the vibe is going to just suck. So make sure, first and foremost, that it is something you want to do. Don't feel pressured into throwing the Halloween party just because you always have. Do it because you want to, because you want to have people over and you want to have the party and you want to dress up. Also, Again, I mentioned it earlier, but don't be afraid to go to the Dollar Tree and Big Lots and 99 cent stores. Uh, depending on where you are in the country, I know there's Dollar Generals and things like that. But basically any discount store, especially if you go right at the beginning of the Halloween decoration season. So, you know, pretty much right after summer. There's always a lot of good deals. There's a lot of stuff to pick from. There's a lot of options. So you can pick and choose a whole bunch of different things, you know, especially if you're at like the Dollar General or the Dollar Tree, they're only a dollar. So even if it breaks relatively quickly after your party's over, who cares? You only spent a dollar on it. Also, again, I mentioned it already, but don't be afraid of making a special playlist just for the party. Whether that means you're picking fun music that you know you and your friends are going to want to dance to, or whether it means you're picking spooky theme music and spooky Halloween sounds to play in the background throughout the party, 
you know, do whatever you want to do, do whatever fits your party, but just go for it. Having music or something like that playing in the background, even if it's not dance level, if you're just hanging out with music in the background, it still adds ambiance and makes it a little more fun. You can also do things like get a small group of friends together and watch your favorite Halloween movies, you know, have an all night movie party especially if Halloween happens to fall on a weekend. I know it doesn't this year, but in theory, if it fell on a weekend, you could literally just have people stay overnight all night Halloween into the next morning and watch a bunch of scary movies, you know, eat popcorn, eat junk food, watch scary movies, joke around. You know, if you get to a point where you need to, pop in a Disney movie to offset the horror movies. There's all sorts of fun things you can do. You just have to figure out what sounds fun for you and whoever you want to invite. And then go from there. So I gave you some ideas. The haunted house party, the mystery parties, you know, large events. Those are a pain. So if you're going to plan a large event, start ahead. Please, honestly, on any of these, start ahead. Because the more time you give yourself, the less stressed you're going to be when you actually come to the day of the party because you'll have everything ready. The other thing is to, if you're going to do a murder mystery party... You need to start early because you need to give all of your friends time to get their costumes. Once you've purchased whichever one you're going to go with and or made one up if you feel so inclined. I think there's websites online where you can do that as well. Once you've created or found the murder mystery you want to go with, if you don't give your friends time to get their costumes, it's not going to be as much fun. So as soon as you figure it out, you need to pick who's going to be who, send out the invitations, and give them enough time to actually get together a costume before the day of the party. Now, some costumes, obviously, if they're things that are more commonly used as costumes, are going to be really, really easy. So, for instance, 1920s stuff is easy because people can find flapper costumes online and you can get like the 1920s gangsta costumes online fairly regularly. So people could find things without too much work. Or, you know, if one of your friends has a nice suit, some kind of zoot suit style suit, they could wear that with and get themselves a fedora and they're done. You know, costume done, easy peasy, no problems. But people may want time to get the bits and pieces that they need. Another thing I recommend is have more food than you think you're going to need. Especially because you never know if people come already fed. I mean, unless you tell them to eat before they come. But if you have a, more food than you think you're going to need, then you don't have to worry about someone not getting enough to eat. Especially if you're going to be serving alcohol, you want to make sure people have enough to eat because you want to make sure they can offset whatever alcohol they drink. Along those same lines, if you know you're going to have a bunch of alcohol at your party, and if you know you have any friends who are a little heavier on the drinking, then you may want to make sure that everyone has some sort of designated driver situation ahead of time, or, you know, have people sleep over. Even if you're doing one of the murder mystery parties or something like that, if you know there's a couple of people who maybe live further away or... You know they drink, so they might need to spend some hours on your couch before they can go home. You know, be prepared for that. Because if you've already got everything ready to go, then they don't feel like they're necessarily putting you out by doing that. And it also makes it so that they don't have to sort of restrain themselves in their enjoyment of the party. Now, alcohol-wise, some restraint should always be exercised. But... Nonetheless, if someone w wants to get a little bit tipsy and that's part of their enjoyment of those kind of parties, but they can't because they know they have to drive, then offering them to crash on your couch is a good option, as long as you're okay with it. Those are all things you can consider and figure out, and obviously it also depends on just what your friend group makeup is like. Personally, I have a lot of friends who enjoy alcohol but don't necessarily enjoy getting drunk, so they'll have like a drink and then they're done. So for me, having a party like that wouldn't be a problem, and my husband and I happen to have a guest room, so we could always let somebody crash if they needed to. It's not an issue. But that's not everyone's situation. So take all those things into account when you're planning it, and try to keep everybody safe. That's also part of being a good host, is making sure everyone's safe. Uh, which actually brings me to my last tip for throwing a great party is the food. You can literally Google Halloween recipes online and get pages and pages and pages and pages of recipes to use. So there is no shortage of options in terms of having Halloween themed food for your party. It's just a matter of what you feel comfortable making or what you know your friends can eat. 
Whenever you're planning something like this, keep in mind if you have any friends with food allergies, you're going to either need to label food specifically for them, for instance, that says no gluten or no nuts, or you're going to need to just make everything that way, one or the other. But you need to have something for everyone. So if you, for example, my husband has some nut allergies. He doesn't have the really severe ones, but he does have them. So whenever we go to a party or anything like that, one of the things we always have to ask is, are there nuts in this for certain things like baked goods or certain salads and things like that? So if you know you have a friend who has a nut allergy, especially if it's a severe one, please make sure that you get them something that is nut free. Or if you have someone who's vegetarian, you have to plan an entree or some dishes that they can eat and just make sure to label them somehow, even if it's just, hey guys, all of the red velvet pup cupcakes are vegetarian or all of the red velvet cupcakes are vegan and the regular chocolate ones are not so please make sure you leave some of the vegan ones for larry and sue you know whoever but there's things like that that you can do that'll really be accommodating to your close friends or whoever you're inviting to the party and just also make it more fun for everyone you can also do potluck Potluck Halloween parties are great because then every person, you know, just make sure they check with you what dish they're going to bring so that you don't have six bowls of punch. But if everyone checks in with you and you coordinate things, then everyone can bring a dish that at least they know they will eat. So if you have someone with food allergies or if you have someone with some kind of gluten intolerance or dairy intolerance or anything like that, you can make sure that they at least bring a dish that they can eat while they're there so that they have something to to munch on and ideally also provide them with something else so that it's not just whatever they brought. Along those same lines, I've mentioned alcohol. If you have friends that don't drink, make sure you have soda available. Although, you know, most parties nowadays do, so I don't know why you wouldn't. And, you know, if you have people that you know like alcoholic free beer or something like that you can buy a six pack and have a couple available there's just a lot of little things you can do to plan ahead one thing i would recommend strongly is make yourself a shopping list especially as you're going through all of those halloween recipes and picking out what you want to work with go through them write down the things you know you don't already have in the house and especially the things that are non-perishable so for instance if you're going to buy alcohol if you're going to buy soda if you're going to buy chips those things last a very long time on the shelf so you could buy it all ahead of time by a couple of weeks if you need to and have it just kind of stored somewhere in the house ready to go for the party that's one fewer things that you have to worry about getting close to the day of when you're trying to get those last few recipes put together and if you know you're not going to have a lot of time choose recipes that are simple you don't have to do anything complicated you don't even have to make things if you don't want to maybe you're not a good cook if that's the case then don't make food have a potluck ask people you know can cook to bring food to the party and then you can go to your local Safeway or Albertsons or whatever store you happen to have in your area Shaw's you can go there and you can pick up things like pre-made Halloween cupcakes a couple days before the party or even the day of you know or you could order Halloween cupcakes you can go to those bakeries and say I want this many cupcakes I want these flavors can you do gluten-free there's a lot of options out there you really just have to look and find out what's available near you and what those options are and then you can kind of go from there and obviously if you have a themed party then you're going to want to stick with whatever your theme is but if you're just going for general Halloween party there is so much stuff out there that you can find that is awesome and fun to have you know brightly colored bowls and Halloween themed candy oh one thing if you're gonna have a Halloween party you should probably have some candy out because even though we're adults now sort of uh there's still this draw for halloween and all the candy and the delicious sugary badness but having a big bowl of candy out to remind everyone of when they were a kid trick-or-treating at halloween is just a little bit more fun and also if you happen to be having a child and adult friendly party then having the candy out for the kids to munch on and you know making sure there's lots of foods that's safe for kids is always a good plan 
I didn't specifically talk about having a child themed Halloween party today because honestly, I'm in California, I'm in the US, most kids go trick or treating. Now as they get older and hit sort of teenage years, you know, then you could look at starting to do one of the types of parties I just described. But when they're little kids, most people go trick or treating and then just kind of hang out with their parents and watch Halloween kid movies and things like that, at least in my experience. So that's the only reason I didn't touch on kids parties. If you're going to have a kids Halloween party, then by all means, do some sort of mystery party. Little kids love trying to figure out the mystery. And I'm sure you could find one for kid ages of all different ranges. And then you could have them, you know, look for the buried treasure, make it pirate themed and hide some sort of candy treasure chests all over the house and give them clues, make it a scavenger hunt, have them go look for it. Just get creative and do something fun that you know you're going to enjoy planning and prepping for, and then just go for it. And above all, I've said it already, but above all, have fun. Parties are supposed to be fun, so do something that you want to do. Okay, and with that, I'll be back next week with another Halloween topic. Thank you for joining me for one of our spooktastic episodes for this Halloween season. Please remember to check out all of the other wonderful shows and productions at nerdsmith.org. As always, you can find me at amethyst underscore magic, and that's magic with a CK on Twitter. I'll be back next week with another spooky Halloween topic for the rest of October. And until then, please remember to geek thyself. Jesse, what is Champions of the Earth? Why Champions of the Earth is a live play radio drama hybrid about Power Ranger, Voltron, crazy action. Does it have teen romance? It has teen romance. Hey guys. And um, hey, hang on a sec. And what else does it have? Is there cool abilities? There's cool abilities. There's an original game system that we're playing together uh, and beta hey, testing. Hey guys, I mean, this is kind of important. Can you? Okay, call in just a second. We're trying to tell people about Champions of the Earth. Okay. It sounds um, really cool. There's uh, there, so it's a cool mix of high school drama, superpowers, and there's mech combat. Yeah, but right now there are monsters coming over the horizon. What are we gonna do, guys? We Whoa! Get out of here! Ah! Marcy, save us! Hang on, I got this. Champions of the Earth! Find us wherever podcasts are downloaded. Check us out at championscast.com and go have yourselves an adventure.